You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The chosen get on mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. And uh, thanks for listening to uh, CarCast. I'm Adam Kroll. It's Matt, the moderator. DeAndrea, right over there. Hello. This show, by the way, CarCast <clears throat> is brought to you by Zybar for better engine performance, horsepower, fuel economy, lower underhood temperatures. We love that, Zybar. Is an ultra thin coating that reduces radiant heat by 90%. Put Zybar on and take the heat off. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, we got the uh, Alexander Weaver. We love Alexander Weaver. He's from uh, RM Sotheby's. And also, is it auctions? What's their spin off? Auctions America. Auctions America. We will uh, bring him in in a couple of few and we'll get to all the. Uh, Stuff that has to do with uh, all the cool cars. Now, I am excited this year for the car auctions. We will be at Pebble Beach. We're always at Pebble Beach. People tweet me, um, <clears throat> hey, where are you going to be? We're going to be at the track on Saturday. The answer is always, come on over and say hi. Yeah. I, I never... I'm trying to think. I don't have that gene. You know, if I'm at a restaurant, I'm eating with my family, and someone wants to say hi, they say hi. I don't care. It's flattering. It's nice that the kids see uh, daddy's known by one one out of every 37 restaurant goers. <laughs> in It used to be one out of every 23, by the way. It's risen. One out of every 37 restaurant Restaurants owners are bigger now. <laughs> in the Los Angeles area. Well, the demographics have changed, too. Not a lot of people speak English in Los Angeles anymore. But either way, I don't mind. Come say hi. There are certain situations, and I'm trying to think, and it's me, like, right before I go out on stage or something of that nature where people are coming up and wanting things or something where I don't like it. But at the track? or at the event, or at the car show, or at the the car cast we're going to do over there in Pebble Beach, by all means, come say hi. Yeah. Look at those cars and uh, appreciate them, and I appreciate you appreciating them. Because we like to talk about cars. <laughs> we do, and I, I live in a world where uh, not everyone in my life appreciates cars. So when I go somewhere with people who do appreciate cars, I appreciate them. How about that? CarCast live at the track Saturday at noon, and it's in the big Nissan display that's kind of like in front of the Rolex uh, suite, you know, where they, where they do the lunch and nobody can get into. It's right in front of that place. <laughs> Every year I go up there. Hey, wrong wristband. Yeah. Uh, can I just use the bathroom? No. No. That's for clean people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we'll bring Alexander Weaver in here. We love it because he knows all about these cars. And I must say, the one car that I'm really going to drill down on, we got the Ferrari GTO, which is, it's funny. The most expensive car offered up at auction. Yeah, it's funny. I started seeing, there's two GTOs. There's kind of, and, and there's a 330, there's a 250, but there's the body, the ones that are bodied, that almost have a late 60s, I always call them like sort of late 60s Corvette look in the rear, you know, beefier with the pillars coming down yeah. in the back and stuff, stronger, yeah. haunchier, tougher looking car. That's what's going. And I prefer the look of that GTO rather than the sort of sleeker look. The sort of Nick Mason style one I like, but I love this style better with the vents in the back of the fenders and all that kind Did of stuff. Did you tell Nick Mason he had the crappy one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got the crappy one. Yeah. Hey, listen, I know you're feeling pretty good about yourself because you paid seventy five grand for that thing and it's worth seventy million dollars. <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't pay a penny over sixty five. That's right. You got yeah. the crappy one. You got the one, crappy Nick one, Mason. <laughs> uh, but the car I'm really excited about. Is the Aston Martin DP215 uh, Grand Touring Competition prototype. 
that estimate is between 18 million and 22 million. And the reason I'm excited about this car is I look at it a lot. I've tried to explain to you this car before. Like I've tried to explain to you the 250 uh, B- Bitsarini inspired whatever yeah. mid engine, whatever car that no one has a name of. And there are certain sleeper cars out there. Like they're, they're cars. Once in a while, you'll see like a dual Gia or Bitsarini or something. And you go, oh, what is that? I don't know what that is. And some are better than others, and some have more interesting power plants than others. But that Aston Martin, the first time I went to the Goodwood Revival, and I yeah. and, and I was there many years ago, and I was like looking at the Ferrari GTOs, and I was looking at the D-Type um, Jag, and they had a lot of like streamliners and lightweights and like cool Jags that you don't normally see. And then uh, seeing some of the Aston Martins like of the day – and then it's like, what is this? That's an Aston Martin. It's like not any Aston Martin I've ever seen yeah, before. Yeah. And it's got everything that I love in a car. It's long hood. Yeah. The hood sets back. I, let me see a picture of that car again. I don't think the hood starts for about three feet back. Like it just – it's got this great Macaduck uh, take. It's got the covered driving lights in the front. It's got all the, all the stuff. It's in, it's in a crazy, sagey, greeny color that nobody really yeah. – And you, I, you see it and it's got like – you can see how you know it's got a little hint of, of Cobra with the grill and a little hint of Toyota GT in the How goddamn far the, back does that yeah. hood start? <laughs> See, the reason Aston Martin screwed up in, like, the DB9s, they brought the hood all the way to the front of the car, all the way to the edge. That's not where you made your bones, Aston Martin. Move it back. Yeah. It's so much better looking that way. We we had that discussion. It was some sort of DOT clipping somebody in the knees regulation. Well, I'm angry. (laughs) As you should be. My point is, is I went to Goodwood. I saw that Aston Martin, and I was like, what have we here? And everyone's like, it's uh, blah, 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 blah. And there was two or three of them over there. And I was like, I have never seen this car before, and I never would see it again unless it was at Goodwood. And so I was like, Jesus Christ. Well, lo and behold, one is coming across the blocks. It's got some dish in the wheels. It's got a high belt line on it. It looks tough, and uh, it's expensive. I'm also... Over the moon about and curious about the uh, GTB4 Spider, the Ferrari yeah. competition. That's hard to explain. You got to look that one up. We got to post pictures of it. That's a hard car to explain what it looks like. Yes, it's it's hard to explain, <laughs> but uh, you can look you can look that one up. I'm very very interested. I think it looks awesome, and I'm very interested in that. All right, so we will bring Alexander Weaver in. Well, why don't we? Matt, now, let's see. What do we got real quick? We got the Bullet Mustang. Yeah. Let's hit that for a second. Let me tell you first about Pluto TV. It's the leading free streaming television service. Watch over 100 TV channels and thousands of movies on demand, completely free. Pluto TV, never ask for a credit card. You don't even need to sign up to watch for free. That's uh, Drew was sitting right where you're sitting. He really picked up his phone. And before I was done talking about Pluto TV, he was on Pluto TV. He was watching himself. (laughs) Watching himself look at his phone. That's right. Surveil. (laughs) Pluto TV is easily the most uh, completely – by the way, it's it's completely legal. It's not – you're not bootlegging or anything. It's not – you're not going to end up in the hole with the Napster guy. Watch. (laughs) (laughs) See? I know more about computers than you thought. So you can watch your favorite TV shows and hit movies and do it all free. Never pay for TV again by downloading Pluto TV. What are you waiting for? Download Pluto TV for free on all your favorite devices today, including uh, your phone and uh, Roku, Amazon, Fire TV, Apple TV, Smart TVs, PlayStations, anywhere you want. You know the Napster guy because you've seen the Italian job with Mark Wahlberg a hundred times. 
<laughs> right? You got that's me gotta, now. That's got to be the reason But it was why. on. The <laughs> it was, yeah. He was like, yeah, because they called him the Napster. Seth Green, the Napster. Oh, did they? Yeah. I did not. It's like, did. you got to call him the Napster because he shared a room with. I did not follow with, it that closely. Yeah. Well, All right. You better got to go back and watch <clears> it now. Tell me about the uh, um, Bullet Mustang. Yeah. So, look, we, um, we, you know, we did, uh, we did an episode of CarCast a couple days ago on Wednesday. So, we really got into, into the car and the specs and everything on it. But I'll, I'll tell you this. Like, we went up there. Um, I was invited up to San Francisco, got to talk with some of the designers and engineers and brand managers of the car, and then drove it home. And and then uh, when I brought it back on Sunday, I swung by and I saw you and you drove it a little bit as well. And it, it used to be, and I said this before on the other show, is it used to be you'd, like, you'd get a Mustang and it's a great pers- uh, performance car, great sports car, and eventually you sort of graduate to, I don't know, an Audi, like RS5 or M3 or something. And I just don't think you need to anymore because the Mustang has become such a good car. I mean, you're talking 480 horsepower in the bullet. It's got Magna Ride, full active exhaust, sport mode, track mode, launch control, line lock. It's got a drag racing Christmas tree built in. It's got every gauge you can possibly imagine, differential temperature cylinder mm. head temperature intake air temperature everything on it and rev matching six speed manual with rev matching and all the stuff you can turn on and off right works so like a charm it's fantastic right the rev matching is super fun and you can make the car loud you can make it quiet you can program it to start loud or quiet it's Kay- got all the cool stuff in it kalen b yes sir i'd like you to attempt <laughs> to describe verbally Launch control, <laughs> Magna and, Ride, and, la- and line lock and Magna Ride. Go. Go. So launch control <laughs> is um, when you're able to take off from zero and go really fast with it being smooth and okay. not jerky. How does that work? Um, something to do with the wheels. <laughs> and, uh, All right. That's that's well, a lot. What was the next one? All right, the next one. Not that we're finished with that one, by the way. <laughs> hey, um, let's move on. Line Pass. lock. Line, line lock. lock. What is line lock? Don't Google it. Um, I, I really I don't even have anything on that one. Okay, okay, that's where you're able to lock the front wheel brakes and spin the rear tires to heat up the tires so you Never can launch. Never that in a million years. Yeah, right. okay. All, All right. right. Do you know what Magna Ride is? No. Magnetic Ride. Anything like that. Any. Nothing. There's not ringing a bell at all. The it, turning of the wheels. There's I some feel kind like, of mag- no. magnets that affect. It's in the, the suspension. It's in the shocks. I, it used to be. I feel like GM and Cadillac pioneered this. Yeah, they did. And they end up like licensing it to everybody. In short, it'd be. It's a shock, and it's got oil in it, and there's tiny, tiny metal particles in it, and they use magnets to bring those particles together, and it makes the the oil in that shock thicker or less you know and and can do it like less a thousand, viscous or more viscous yeah, right. but now with computers and magnets you can you can change it like a thousand times per second right as you're driving down the road it's good you nailed it though yeah i thought yeah. so yeah. if he wasn't high he'd be able to repeat all this back to you a week from now <laughs> what were the three questions it's we just asked you? Go, huh? <laughs> all right go get alexander weaver yeah. in here why don't you take care I'll of tell you guys business? Uh, about castrol edge mm-hmm. heat friction and viscosity break down and rob your engine of maximum performance Friction results in loss of performance up to 10%. Could you imagine that bullet, 480 horsepower, losing 48 Mm. horsepower? Mm -mm. That would be a disaster. Mm -mm. Castrol Edge, engineered with fluid titanium technology, it physically transforms to be stronger under pressure. It helps fight friction and deliver maximum levels of performance from your car. It's three times stronger against viscosity breakdown than leading oils. Castrol Edge. Unlock the true performance in your car's engine. Alexander Weaver, back on the show. Always good to see our friend. A website, by the way, rmsotheby's.com. This is a very exciting part of the season, auction season for Alexander. I know he's, he's busy. There are many great cars. Boy, congratulations to RM for getting this is essentially all the first round picks for the biggest, yeah. most coveted uh, auction weekend of the year yeah yeah absolutely you know thanks for having us on too um yeah from a ferrari 250 gto to a one-off aston race car to you know the car that was on the gt40 yeah on the podium when you know 
Ford beat Ferrari and came in one, two, three, and this was the third place car. I mean, it's a pretty stellar lineup. And uh, couldn't get the first or second, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. But third's pretty good. Third's pretty it's good. still a podium it's still car. It's still a podium car. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. It's and the got car, the great color scheme. The car's yeah. sitting in the, in my office now, and it's it's gold. Yes. And it's got a pink scallops on the front of it. Yeah. Yeah. And green wheels. It's great. And you get you know, like a blind guy decided the colors for this car with red knockoffs. You know. Yeah. And but after after you look at it for a day, you're like, this looks unbelievable. It's a great, really deep. Rich, I gold, tell you, you ra- you looks- want the story on this Beautiful. car? Go watch the twenty four hour war on chassis. Yeah, exactly. learn all about it. Exactly. So uh, this is interesting, and uh, I've always thought that GT forties were kind of undervalued in the past. I, I felt like they weren't trading for what the the mega race cars were, especially anything Ferrari, Porsche. You know, I always felt they were a little cheaper than they should have been. Now this is probably going to herald the new era where they are getting yeah. what they deserve yeah i i would totally agree with you and you know i've driven most of the great cars from the 60s in my opinion except for the gto and you know the gt40 is hands down the best car you can drive and it, the way it handles the speed and what they did it's unreal with how but well they did at le mans every other race all the drivability aside i just think as an investment i just thought they're just not what the they they should have been getting more over the years, and yeah. I think they're they're going to get that now. Why is that? Because it didn't feel like Ford should play in the world of of Ferrari and you know Aston, or I think anything that has an American power plant is stifled a little bit. And it says Ford on the hood, not Ferrari or Porsche or Mercedes. But we're kind of getting over that now because we're we getting have a new it. Ford GT, the old yeah. you know the two thousand five six whatever you know GTs are you know. They're a profitable car. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think Ford did a great job when they came out with those in 04, 05, 06, and then the new one is absolutely amazing, and, you know, nobody can get one, really. And if you can, you're paying a million dollars over MSRP for one now. But I would agree that the, the original GT40 is one of the best cars, best sports cars, in my opinion, and I've driven them on track. I've driven them, and they are absolutely unreal. A 250 LM is a very close second, mm-hmm. and... A Ferrari a, mid-engine. A bad 250 LM is still a little bit more than a great GT40, which yes. makes, you know, as far as their histories go and, and their provenance and everything, which makes no sense to me. Um, yeah. The LMs have gone up a lot over the last yeah. decade. A lot. Uh, yeah, you, absolutely. You used to be able to <laughs> get one of those Ferrari LMs, yeah. I don't know, 10 years ago for $3 million bucks or $5 million bucks or something. Now it's 20 yeah. 25 Like, yeah. Wow. Like yeah. crazy. I guess the GTO is probably dragging everything up. Yeah, I mean, the GTO definitely pulled up the Testarossas and the 250 LMs and then some of the other larger displacement 12 cylinder cars that people, you know, most people aren't even aware exist. But. Well, speaking of that, I am in love with that 365 GTB4 Spider competition. <laughs> I'm in love with that car. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I don't I, know I, what this car is exactly, but I'm <laughs> in love with it. Yeah, I, but, I, I, uh, I, I forgot where we sent we had just gone to goodwood and i was traveling and i it popped up on the website and i emailed it uh to adam and he wrote back this is my favorite car yeah like that's it like all of a sudden this is the coolest thing it doesn't look like anything else no yeah. and, and the color like, scheme and again is a, a, it's, it's tough ridiculous to and amazing and, and this particular car has got a weird story like it was sort of says, sorry max Pata, give us lot numbers so i oh i just got it right here but it'll be if you want to go online it's it's 232, and we'll give you these lot numbers along with the stuff so you can easily go look it up. But I'm in love with this car. I'm, I'm scared to see it in real life. I'm scared I might be disappointed. I love the blue leather. I love the blue carpet. And this, it's a Targa. <clears throat> it's a Targa. <laughs> this car could be one of the steals of the auction if it, if it yeah. doesn't go for astronomical money because one-off Ferraris are fetching – a lot of money, and this one, the estimate is two three to three five, and I don't feel like uh, I feel like that number is going to go up a lot in the next few years with this car. I would agree with you, and I think cars of this era, you know, the seventies, late sixties, seven, and into the seventies, that design studies that are a little bit different are absolutely coming into age now, and I, people are wanting the funkier stuff like that. I, I think the the trifecta for this is one, it's Ferrari, and they they always do well, and two, it's a race car, and that's been really really moving all the race cars the last few few years. 
And this being sort of a one-off version with a very unique story is is the other thing people love is the story. And I, I think for that reason, this car, I, I mean, for, for you and the buyer, but I, I think this thing car this car beats the estimate. I I think it it should. And if you were to buy something like that and hold it for a couple of years, you're absolutely in a good place. I on think it. I think the number two bidder on your Ferrari 250 GTO should buy that car. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it'd still be less than the seller's commission on the GTO. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> less than the fee. Yeah, your buyer's fee is going to be more than that. So <laughs> I'm in love with that Aston Martin DP 215. I was on that train a million years ago at Goodwood, and I just saw that car. Do you recall what it was back then? I just remember going, "What? Well, that's an Aston Martin? And then like, yeah, yeah it's an yeah. Aston Martin. And I was like, whoa, 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 where's that car? I've never seen one of those. Yeah. And yeah. I would only see it at the Goodwood Revival. I I did not ever see it, I believe, at an auction or on an auction no, site. No, never. I've never ever seen it. never seen it at a car show. Yeah. No matter, yeah, I haven't even it's really seen never it. never been for sale publicly ever. Never even seen it at Pebble Beach on the lawn. Never seen it at the, you know, car, Italiano Concourse, which will get some other different kinds of cars and stuff. Like all the places you see, all the cars, you've never seen this car. Yeah. yeah. It's in my office too. It's sitting next to the GT40. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, 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 you're going to come over now, aren't you? I would move my <laughs> desk if I were you and just put it right in between those two cars. <laughs> I'm in love with that car. Yeah. Yeah. In person, it's really awesome. The front end is super cool. The rear end is really cool too. The rear end kind of looks like a Shelby Daytona coupe, but yeah. it predates it, mm-hmm. which is awesome. So. Well, I was going to say it has it. You would think it has a lot of influence from the, all these other cars, but all these other cars came out after that. Yeah, and yeah. Right. and sixty three. I mean, that's yeah. early. And uh, estimate is eighteen mil. The twenty two mil. Boy, the Euro. In English cars, especially Aston Martin, but especially Jag, with some some race history, have really gone berserk over the last few yeah, years. Yeah, like E-type right? lightweights and you know these crazy that D-type, Astons. the Le Mans D-type you yeah. guys had a few years ago was like I don't know fifteen million or yeah. fourteen million, something like that. Yeah, it was that, awesome. What that is, was like a world record, right? For yeah. uh, for a British. Yeah, that car. was. I think it was twenty one <clears throat> all it? in or something. Yeah. Twenty two all in. It was I will, crazy. Uh, Alexander Weaver. I'll give you a quick little thought. And then you tell me whether you agree or, or disagree or, or expand on it. Um, the, 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 the most expensive cars, obviously, that we're offering here are all race cars, for sure. Um, when I started getting cars, the race cars were kind of like, well, that's cute, but you need yourself a Ferrari Daytona or a Gullwing. You know, or something, uh, Dino Ferrari or something, you know, something you can drive to cars and coffee or something that people recognize, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like you go, you got a Dino? I got a Dino, you know, yeah. or what color is your Dino? Yeah. And the race cars were kind of like one off and weird and no one, no one was really hot for them per se. Now, obviously GTOs have always been expensive and, and things of that nature, but now it's kind of, when it comes to collecting, it's kind of about the story, right? Like you don't want to go, Hey, I got a Daytona. <laughs> With Newman's name in it. Oh, I got one too. Like, yeah. you don't want that. You want to go, what? And then you'll be the only guy with that car, which you can safely say with race cars, because they've made either one or very limited yeah. numbers of those cars. Is that why they're going up the story or the exclusivity? You know, I think the race cars that we're offering are, are extremely special. And, you know, a GTO, DP215, which is the Aston, the GT40, you know, there are similar. You know, the GTO, there was never, they were all kind of intended for racing, let's face it. Um, but they have to be, if it's, if you're buying a race car, it's got to be something that, yes, has a great story and is it very important. You know, it won Le Mans, it raced, you know, Targa Florio, it did this, it did that, like, you know, finished at Sebring in its class, first in class. There are a lot of race cars out there that I think were, that people look at and you go, know, okay, it's a, it's a 7911 that started life as a T. It's been a race car, it's, you know, since the late 80s, something like that. That's something that, you know, that's where the value doesn't increase. Yeah, I'm going to say but, just the ones that started off as a race car. How do you explain them? And I'm, well, it's going to be a significant G- race car. G- and that car necessarily didn't have to have won Le Mans, but if one like it won Le Mans, you know, like you know that okay, the GTOs did great in in period in their history. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go back a little here and say that, <clears throat> and it's half of what you're saying, but it's also sort of half of what I'm saying, which is like. 
Lotus Cortina that was a factory team car. Two hundred eighty grand now. When that car was, you know, forty grand yeah. all day long yeah. because it was an old race car. Yeah. And nobody cared. Now that's not winning at Le Mans. That's just a no, old no. race car that has gone up, you know, tenfold in value. Where nobody, even the even the pipsqueak stuff or the Japanese stuff or the four banger stuff is all like, well, it's two hundred fifty grand to get a Lotus Cortina now with a little bit of history. Yeah, that's a significant jump. Whereas like Dinos have gone up over that yeah. period of time, but not that. Yeah, it, it, well, yeah. Then it does go back to what you're saying: is people want a great story with their car, right. you know? And and it, if you're buying one a Lotus Cortina for 250 grand, you better hope that it's got a great story with it, and it's not you know a part of this car and a part of that car, and you know somebody just built the motor last week. You know, it needs to still have you know a lot of its original features to really make the value. Right. That's uh, a good. That's a good worthwhile example of it's all story at that point. The, yeah. the car is 40 grand and. It's two and a half four cylinder. Yeah, but over the years, also you know. yeah. over the years, also you know, you have so much more data that people have accumulated on all these cars to back it up, and right. that's what's key too. You know, there's so much more information sharing on each one of these cars. Well, there was always someone who was there back in the day. Sometimes in the shop, sometimes just at the track, and they'll tell you, like, I was there, I saw that car, you know, I remember, blah blah blah. Tony, start start reaching out to as many of those people as possible if you have those cars, and start documenting those conversations and getting as much stuff written down as possible because. At some point, the next generation is going to be looking for this information, and you're right. A lot of it is you've got to talk to those guys. You've got to just talk to them and just start picking their brain and reminding them of, of stuff. Alexander, what is the process? Walk us through the process of procuring a 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO where this is the jewel and the crown of any auction. Um, the guy who's selling it, has to have a thought like first thought is i'm selling my car second thought is hmm well i could do it privately and not pay any commissions on it but i could go with an auction and get a lot of eyeballs and press and everything else this car's been everywhere all the time now for the last couple months and then who do i use for the auction how does that work and where i mean it makes sense that monterey is you know wait don't it's the Super Don't Bowl. do Scottsdale. Wait yeah. for wait for. Don't do Amelia Island. Wait for Monterey. But then, how does the process go from there? You know, when you're talking about that car in particular, there are people out there that are looking for 250 GTOs, and it gets to a point where most of the people that have them, in all honesty, that 50 million dollars isn't going to change their lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that's where most of the garages that they're in. It's it doesn't matter. Right. So trying to get one from someone is not an easy task. Right. Um, so, you know, going in and saying, okay, you know, this is what we think we can do for you. And mm-hmm. this is, you know, giving them a proposal and you kind of got to go through the list of the 36 owners of GTOs. And actually there's less than 36 owners because a couple of guys own more than one. Wow. Um, of course. but yeah, of course. So, <laughs> but some of them have owned them since the seventies, Sure, you know, and, yeah. and they don't need to sell it. And, you know, at this point it's, it's part of their identity. Sure. You know, I mean, so when they come to you or when you find it or procure it or whatever, yeah. they go, look, we, uh, you know, Alexander, I am interested in going with your company for this car, but we got to talk numbers here. Yeah. I don't, we're not, I'm not going to give you 8% or 10% yeah, or course. whatever it is. Like, I want to see if I can drive that number down that they, that you're going to take is the VIG for selling the car. And then am I going to go up the street to the other auction house and go, all right, here's what these guys offer. Yeah. Now explain to me why I should pay another point with your house. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I think track records really prove a lot of things and, and our client database really shows, you know, what we've done over the years and how many cars we have sold, you know, in that price range. Um, you know, we've already done one this year in, in that price range. That was a, you know, a, a different kind of Ferrari, but you know, we we definitely have the base. Which to, Ferrari to, was it? It was a Testarossa. Oh, you did a Testarossa this year. Mm-hmm. What but did that sell for? It was uh, an '89. <laughs> <laughs> Miami Vice, yeah. but now yeah, exactly. Corvette chassis. It was yeah, a real yeah, Testarossa. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't it was a real one. Chopped and everything. You know. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so that did all right for you guys. Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? I am impressed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, <laughs> wait, you know, Testarossa. Sorry, in Europe. It was in the U.S. Actually, it was in it was in L.A. 
Are you are you being a little coy? Like yeah, this was a we deal? Yeah, yeah. We oh, have oh to this be. wasn't so, at auction. No, no, this was not at auction. At okay, all. No, sorry. So. I, th- I thought there was but, something I missed. Is, uh, you guys do private sales? Yeah, yeah outside we do the a lot of well. we do a, a lot of private treaty sales. All right, sales so you don't well, have so. to. We don't have to get into numbers because it's a private thing. But I must say, and you're the guy to ask. I was at, and then we'll double back to the process. But I was uh, hanging out with Bruce Meyer. Yeah. On uh, last Saturday night, I was staying in a shop, and uh, his showroom, Beverly Hills, had some event nearby, blah, blah, blah. I was staying there, and every time I take a look at his Ferrari, I guess it's a Testarossa. Yeah, it's 625 TRC. And I look at it, and I go, huh, that's an expensive car. And then <laughs> then I have this other thought, which is, huh, I wish he was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd be happy with me. I think it'd be a two-way street. Yeah, we'd yeah. have like, a lot of good conversations. We both would be it'd happy. It'd be like a lot of hugs, dude. like a it's very not, genuine hug. It's not hugs. a purely selfish thought. He'd <laughs> yeah. enjoy my company as yeah. well. Uh, we'd have an argument like, hey, no Datsuns at the Beverly Hills place. You know what I mean? You can put them yeah. back at the warehouse in Van Nuys. <laughs> yeah, right? we, right. really, oh, we have people come through here. You yeah. understand? Yeah. <laughs> But so that'd be a little strain on our relationship. But I always look at that Ferrari up on its little pedestal there, and I go, "Huh, that's an expensive car." And then I go, "Wait a minute, Ferrari GTO, that's an expensive car." And then I go, "But wait a minute, what about that car compared to a GTO?" And then I go, "Hmm, I don't know. I don't roll that deep with Ferraris." But Alexander Weaver could probably answer that question. A generic. Testarossa with good history, 50s car, 60s car, uh, GTO. What is it could be anywhere between 35 and 45 million. So it's, a, it's off the GTO. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's still a very valuable. Absolutely. Car. And, if, and if it won Le Mans? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going yeah. up a little bit. So there you go. It's going up very, It'll inch very up, strong. it'll yeah. kick up. Yeah. Add 30 grand. I want to be a Le Mans win. Will. Yeah. And, and then. <clears throat> What about Le Mans in general? I feel like all roads now lead to Le Mans. Like in the past, it was sort of like, oh, it's got some good race history. Or something. Now it's like Le Mans, Le Mans, Le Mans. Yeah. What's going on with Le Mans? Like- no, I mean, Le Mans is absolutely, you know, that's the, that is the World Series of motor racing. You know, everybody wants something that won Le Mans. And, and nowadays it's so different. But I think back then when you had the privateer teams and you had guys that were running these cars and, and you I mean look at look at these cars and imagine running in this Aston hundred and ninety something miles an hour down the malls on straight. Can't it's even. insane. Like, you know, the way those drivers were and how how much they did in these cars is unbelievable, I think. Is it safe to say then uh the race <clears throat> racing cars in general were just sort of underappreciated in the past and now since race cars have gone up well then the biggest race in the world has gone up absolutely Lamont, which is or if you're going to do that'll bring race up cars. the little races and soon we're going to be like this one at brainerd yeah <laughs> we're like yeah it's fantastic and we were talking about a ferrari at the office the other day that is the only ferrari that ever won daytona and sebring oh really yeah and it's you know it's from the 90s and oh it's really 333 sp and, and we had this car in our office a couple of years ago and we were looking for everything three million bucks for it right and to me that we we even said then we'll talk about this twenty years from now when we had this car in the office the only Ferrari to ever won Daytona and Sebring right and you know as you know being American like those are our two biggest races really right and yeah. um, you know how much is that car going to be worth in twenty years you know is what we were saying then yeah. and even it just we we just started talking about it again the other day and you go you know that car even then was three now is six in 10 years will be 12 and 20 will be 20 you how know? long ago was it three approximately uh that was four years ago i think five years ago we had that car yeah. in there and it was three million bucks well, and now it's six and you know it'll just continue to go up and i think that's one of the most iconic contemporary ferrari race cars outside of formula one people should see the 333 picture it with i don't know the momo livery that's the car on it. Yeah, the one with yeah. the Momo car, the Momo yeah. livery car is the one that one day. I love the confidence Sebring. that you guys I sit around. I'm such a horrible student. Twenty years. I always <laughs> think to myself, why was I a horrible student? Yeah, and I've uh, been an average student. You didn't apply yourself. No, <laughs> I applied myself. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, I know everything. When I was in high school, I was like, he's stupid. He doesn't know yeah. anything. And I did apply myself. I wish I had that moment. You know what? That reminds me, Max Zapata. <laughs> write this down. My kids are horrible students. Right. And 
My daughter's going to be hot. I don't think I worry about it that much. Maybe she'll marry a producer, but the boy I worry about. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Remind me to do this. I'm going to pay one of his high school teachers about the 10th grade. Someone should have done this with me. That's my biggest lament. I was a bad student. I knew I was bad. My counselor knew I was bad. And all the teachers knew I was bad. I mean, I remember saying to my counselor once. We all agree. I was like, <laughs> hey, uh, all my friends got uh, Mr. Diliberti's class. Uh, I think I should sign up for Mr. Diliberti's class. And I got that. Uh, he's kind of requires students to read and do yeah. homework. Like, you know, like that's like, like you picking up a half inch chuck. Um, like a uh, ra- ra- plunge router and me going, eh, that's a little too much tool for you. Like you're, you're going to hurt yourself. Like that's the speech I got yeah. about Mr. Yeah, Diliberti. Okay. So I always knew I was stupid, but I never got the, hey, man, you got a lot of potential and you're obviously bright. You're just not applying yourself. I got to pay a teacher, I think two, 200 cash will do it, to pull my son aside in the 10th grade and lie to him and go, look. You're not a good student, but we all know how bright you are. We can tell how smart you are. That's going to be a lie because they're going to be thinking this girl, a kid, stupid. But he can always carry that around in his head. Yeah. And then later on, when people say to him, well, you weren't a good student, but you didn't apply yourself. Go, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I didn't. They told me it, that. Is this the same try. son you, you take out of school for the first few days of the year to take to Monterey? Well, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he is a, he's a horrible student, but I want him networking. He's learned more he's, in he's Monterey. Learning, yeah, he's learning more in Monterey. You, you yeah. just got to teach him the things that he's interested in, right? Yeah. Like, hey, that's uh, – what's Chip's last name up there? Chip uh, – we just uh, saw him in Goodwood. Okay. Yeah, Connor. I, I Chip know. Connor. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go, hey, yeah. see that guy? Yeah. Chip Connor. Yeah. That's your new dad. Yeah. You go jump in his airplane or his Ferrari and you don't get out. Just, you just don't get out. I'll just see you when go you're right up to him, give him a hug and say, I love you, daddy. And then just hang on to his leg with both hands and never go in. Wherever he goes, he goes back yeah. to Singapore, you're going with him. Go with yeah. him. You'll be bilingual in 10 yeah. minutes and rich. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, He's texting you from the jet. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got some Wi-Fi on this jet. <laughs> so the 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 process. I'll let you think about it again. But you you you're dealing with somebody who is saying, in essence, but you tell me, and I'll I'll tease it. I want you to sell my super expensive car because I don't want to deal with the hassle or the headache or the whatever. Or I think you can fetch me more money for this car, even if we back out a little percentage uh, the, for you. Don't answer. Give it some thought. Or it could be both, client to client or widow or what have yeah. you. I'll tell you about uh, Wrangler. Everyone has a favorite pair of jeans that fit perfect and always look great. No one knows this better than Wrangler. We did substantiate that uh, our, our – what word am I thinking of? Well – we uh, we identified Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s – oh, no, Dale Earnhardt's Wrangler livery on his NASCAR from, like, yeah. back in the eh, late 80s, early 90s or something like that. Okay. Wrangler jeans made for the modern-day adventurer. Whether you uh, ride a bike or a bronc or a skateboard, these jeans are made for you. Classic, modern styles, a range of fits and price that work for you, plus vintage re-releases. What would it be, like, 89 – 88. What year is that uh, Earnhardt with his Wrangler Chevy over there? Visit uh, Wrangler.com. Check out their great selection of jeans, shirts, pants, outerwear for men and women. Wrangler denim made for the modern world. That is Wrangler. All right. So, uh, Alexander, what do you think? Uh, is I, would, it I would add to this you? that, first of all, I doubt anybody coming in with a car – Worth anything north of five million is a first time customer. I mean, how many are established relationships, and that would have to do even if they, we haven't transacted with them, we know who they are, right? You know, uh-huh. like you've been in touch with them, you know, you know who has the great stuff out there for the most part. But you know, in, in this situation, the owner said, You know, I've had this car for almost 20 years, I've done the GTO rallies, I've raced the car at Monterey, I've done everything I can do in the car. And I basically just want to experience some other cars. And, you know, we all have our car fund, whether it's 10 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, or 100 million, you know, in some cases. Everybody has their car fund, and and you can only, you know, use so much of it at a time. And and he just kind of wants to experience some other stuff. And and he's, 
uh, he's used this as much as he could, and obviously it was a very good investment for him too. Um, sure. But he, he didn't. Bought it he didn't buy it that ago. way, you know. Yeah. And he he's a guy that just buys what he likes and uses his cars as they're intended to be used. So, so he's going to spend the money. Yeah, <laughs> good. yeah hopefully. Good. So, um, Don't leave that to your family. So <laughs> just he'll spend it. Buy more race cars. You know, he came, we went. We actually propo- like went to him with a proposal, and we said this, and he said, "You know, I think it's the right time, and and I think this is a great idea." And uh, he was totally on board, and and he really. He knows that, you know, if you say, okay, I want to sell this myself, you want to sell, you know, whatever car you own by yourself, you know, you want to sell your M3. So, you know, five, ten buddies that might want it. Yeah. But how many guys out there really want an M3? You know, want a supercharged, dine and equipped, you know, awesome car like yeah. that. You, you don't know them all. I don't know. I'm you hoping know, but, a lot. But... And, and how many of those do you want to send all the information and do the full write up and take all the photos and you know it's just it can be a hassle and especially a guy that has a car of that value you know he just kind of wants somebody to come in and do it all and send him a check for you know as much as possible yeah and he has you know an idea in his head what he wants and we're working with him to to get him you know all of that and more. And we have the audience to to present the car to and the way to present the car. If you plan this right, you should sell that Aston Martin after the 250 GTO because he's going to decide if he's got a a little extra cash in his pocket. And that (laughs) Aston Martin is a good – I feel like there's some sort of tax benefit if you flip this right away. If you move that money, you move half that money into that Aston Martin. Yeah. yeah, I would. Uh, I, uh, right? Well, you want to talk about. You go home and tell the wife, I sold the Ferrari and we pocketed $25 million. She's like, 25 Well, we did get an Aston Martin on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> you want to. Well, you want to talk about a conversation piece. Uh, the Ferrari GTO is, is great, but there are less of those Aston Martins. I, I guarantee you show anyone that car. And I don't care how deep they roll. They're just going to walk in and go, what the hell is this? They, you walk in on a Ferrari yep. GTO. You go, hey, you got a GTO. Yeah. Like, that's cool. I've seen those. But I've seen those. I've yeah. seen those, but I've never seen this. Tell that dude that we may be looking to move a BRE 510 tribute car. Now, don't call it a clone. <laughs> don't call it a Call it a tribute car. Yeah. And, uh, Not a replica. Tell him once, if, you, if he makes that 50 million yeah. bucks, just... It's got so, authentic bones. It's got good bones. Good bones. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys about Zybar. This is a revolutionary new product that we love here over at the CarCast Garage. We're excited about trying it out. This is an ultra-thin coating for manifolds, headers, turbos, tailpipes, mufflers, exhaust tips, whatever. It's like a thousandth of an inch thickness. The re- it reduces radiant heat by 90%. It's the first DIY thermal coating of its kind. This is better than what you've seen with just the normal wraps and stuff. This is non-corrosive. And it doesn't break down even in 2,000-degree environments. It makes wraps and heat shields and expensive ceramic coatings obsolete. It comes in four awesome colors. There's bronze, midnight black, cast silver, and Porsche gray that will make your engine a showpiece. This is available for purchase at Zycoat.com and many auto parts retail locations. Uh, Put Zybar on. Take heat off. I'm looking at this stuff because... It's it's not a ceramic base. It's more I don't know maybe like a polymer based, mm-hmm. and it's great for like turbo housings and stuff. And since you blew the motor at Jay Leno's garage filming on the eighty seven mm-hmm. Nissan, mm-hmm. this would be a good time to try that on the headers mm-hmm. and the turbo manifold. It really would keep all that heat in there, and that's how you got to make some power. Yeah, you got to keep the heat down. Look, even if you're a naturally aspirated engine and you got like a Datsun, you got the header underneath the Webers and all that heat's That's, coming this, off. This is going to make a huge difference. I talked to these guys on the phone. We had a great conversation about it. And you're exactly right. This, you could do it on that header and even put a little bit on the on the heat shield in between the two that you make. I, I know you made one in there. This would. This I would made do one it. after uh, Road Atlanta. <laughs> I made one after every single Dots guy went by and went, "Hey, where's your heat shield? Where's your heat shield?" That's my favorite part about going racing is everyone who comes by goes, "Hey, man, where's your stuff?" And I go, uh, yeah. "I don't know. We didn't do that." And they go, "Wow." <laughs> Well, that's weird. And then they walk away, and I go, I'll see you in the race. I'll see you when I'm down on power. I'll see you from behind. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, Alexander, um, what is – let's see. We'll put you on the spot for a couple of investment cars, cars 
you think are on the come. We were just at Goodwood. We're just in England, and we're looking at some cars. And we were looking at a 190 Mercedes, and I was like, yeah, these things are getting pulled up by the Gold Wings and the 300s and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, these things are going to move. And for the first time, in my knowledge, one cracked to 200K. Yeah. Uh, that's a little lowly 190 yeah. Mercedes that no one really gave a crap about a few years ago. Uh, then there are cars where you think they're sort of poised to make a move, like 355 Ferraris, and they make a little move, and then they don't really yeah. move. And that's a good car. That. I, I like that car. And it's a good car. So it's not always based on you know good car, bad car. Yeah, and that's something I, I was happy you brought up, because we have a wide selection of values in this auction as well it's not all about the 20 million dollar asset and the 50 million dollar ferrari you know we have other stuff that i think could be good investment grade stuff in the future whether like one thing we have is a lexus lfa yeah it's got 110 it's miles on it it's brand new Love you it, know yeah. i mean i think that's a car that you know that was that's basically japan's halo car so far in the 21st century mm-hmm. you know and i think that's something that will really go down in history for them and something that I think, you know, if you can buy something like that for 400000 that's brand new with 100 miles on it, yeah. where are you going to find another one? And, you know, just park that in your garage and, I mean, just look at it. And it's start beautiful. it up because they sound awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's the V10. V10, like, high revving. It's so cool. No, I, I agree. There's, there's room for modern-day supercars, as we've seen. We've also go back to the uh, XJ220 and seeing yeah. things for sort of supercars from the late 80s. Um, we're now kind of spanning the, the calendar for this yeah. stuff because you were talking about the Ferrari 333, you know, 90s car. Yeah. Some years ago, it's like, eh, it's not a, not a vintage Ferrari. It's 90s. But take it from the guy who bought a bunch of 80s race cars. Everyone kept going, well, that's not old. Yeah. That's not vintage. I go, yeah. well, it's going to be. Like, <laughs> how do you think? Yeah. Just wait. Yeah. What you, there, so that car's from 1985. You know, there's yeah. wagons from 1885. I would consider them old. Yeah. Like, yeah. It'll just, time kind of, you get a little more correct every day because at some point, you well, know, it all comes back to what did you want when you were 18? What did you want when you were 15? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The same Dodson that he has now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, but as, as those kind of those groups come into age, like. Oh, we're talking where, cars? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, he meant oh, cars. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was weird, but all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll answer. But let's, I'm going to step out of the room, you guys. Can, yeah, we'll yeah. fix this. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like this stuff. I liked back then. But I also, I mean, I'm a guy who loves that Aston Martin and also loves a 2000 Roadster and like race trim Dodson, yeah. you know. So I got uh, a little, mm-hmm. I got a little more range than the Mopar guys. <laughs> if, <laughs> if someone was was getting in that in that hundred to two hundred thousand dollar range, what's piquing your interest these days? You know, I think I think great Supras, I think great NSXs, I think some of those cars as well as like Supras. we have a, we have mm-hmm. a, a 2000 Lotus. Esprit Twin Turbo. I was just looking at that and car. And it's got 80 kilometers on it from now. The, those like, cars. 50 miles. That's a great all car. All Esprits are, uh, I'll use the word retarded, not in a pejorative way, but not advanced. Like, they have always sort of sat back in the collector yeah. world a little bit. Not, always had a good look. Like had a, a great cool look, look. And they were oh. in Bond movies and stuff. And they've, they've never been appreciated. Like, you look at those Lotuses and you're like... That's a lot of car. The new ones, I think, the newer ones are the one you have, 3.5 twin turbo, probably. Yeah. Well, then we also have a 77. If you want to pull that one up, it's lot 264. Yeah, and, and, and I've, I've thought to myself, these cars aren't appreciated like they yeah. should be. They're very exclusive. They're English. They're, you know. Yeah, what is that? What's so that's the estimate seven, on that That's car? a 77. And I think we're, you know, 80 to 100 on that car. I, I agree with you. That is yeah. a very good way. I good guess. Uh, that is a good direction to go because it's it's very exclusive. It's a great design too. It's a great Indeed, design. Indeed design and you know the wedge shape was just that was the coolest thing in the seventies yeah. too. You know, and then yeah. the, the modern one with the V eight turbo and the, sort of the revised dash with more of the the gauge pod and stuff yeah. in it instead of the flat dash. It's a good looking car. And another, I don't know we, how it is to drive. It seems like it would be fun. Yeah, I mean, it should be pretty fun. 
Well, but, but, you know, that's an investment quality car with 50 miles on it. It's not like you're going to really use that one. But, you know, another thing we have, there's a 928 GTS in there, a 95 928 that GTS. That one caught my eye. It's like four or 5,000 like, miles. I was like, wow, this thing's, these things are going up. Though. They have shot up. It's crazy. Uh, oh, he's totally done this. The front those, engine portion yeah, on Agnes the rocks. Walker's getting a boner over that yeah. thing. Oh, great. I, I told That's you those cars were going to yeah. go up. I, yeah. I was oh, looking at those. My brother had a 928. What a disaster of a car. <laughs> of course, he had all the miles on it, but it was, it was just a train wreck. But, you know, when you get into it. stuff like this, you know, there's, you go, all right. Lot when did, when did by the way. front engine Porsches get hot again? But it's it's the rare ones, you yeah. know, the GTSs, and especially, you know, honestly, if that car had a five speed, it'd be another fifty grand. I was going to say that one's an automatic. And if it was a five um, speed, it'd be. But another if you think about the nine, the nine twenty eight when that when that S came out, that was one of the most expensive cars you could buy. Yeah. it was one of the like one of the fastest like top end cars you can buy. Yeah. Like it was a pretty amazing car. Yeah. I so think we have that and a nine forty four in the sale and a nine fourteen. So like yeah. you know, we got nine, all the Porsches nine, with the motors nine, in the wrong nine places. Forty fours are coming on. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I guess a 914 is a mid engine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, Actually, the motors are all in the right places. The 911 is just in the wrong place. The, so. the uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, 928, I think, featured in two 80s movies uh, uh, Weird Science. Yeah. And the other one with Tom Cruise. Uh, what's the one where he sleds around? Risky his, Business. Yeah, there Risky we go. Risky Business. business. Yeah. yeah. That one. yeah. Great sound on that, uh, that car. And I've always liked those. And that yeah, my take was always like, this is the most expensive car you could have bought in like 1985 or three or whatever, 79, 80, yeah. whatever. And I was seeing them some years ago and like they were fairly inexpensive. And I was like, God, that seems like a cool piece to get. But the world has, has caught on. All right. Do your last uh, piece over there, yeah. uh, Matt, if you would. Um, guys, don't forget about Geico. We love them. And everybody's got a to-do list. You're dropping off dry cleaning. You're picking up some milk. You can add, save hundreds of dollars of car insurance, uh, hundreds of dollars on car insurance. You don't have to pick up or drop off anything. If you just go to Geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. So if you want some extra money in your pocket, this is the most rewarding the most rewarding to do you can do today, go to Geico.com. So Matt's going to be in Detroit tomorrow at uh, Roadkill yeah. Nights, 4 p.m., with Goldberg up there, like, drag racing a demon? Well, we're doing, uh, we're doing a live car cast at mm-hmm. 4, and then uh, after that, uh, yeah, we're drag racing uh, Hellcat Wide Bodies. Oh, Hellcat Wide Bodies. <laughs> yeah, Challenger Hellcat Wide Bodies. That's right. <laughs> This is why uh, the terrorists hate us. I, I, I keep like, going. Hey, with we got nothing better to do. I, I keep uh, texting them back and forth, and we're talking about how to launch these things so we don't embarrass. The strategy is this. There's so much power with those things is if you look like you can't hook up, we're like, forget it. Turn off the trash control. Do a thousand foot, foot smoky burnout and just put on a good show and get out, stand on the hood and be like, woo. Yeah. Hello, America. Go Richard then, Rollins on everyone's yeah, ass. Like, he'll be there, too. We're racing against them. Oh, you are? And oh, Chris Jacobs win. and, like, Christy Lee. It's just like, it's like a it's a challenge. It's all for time, right? Like yeah. You're not going five wide or anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all for time. <laughs> 18 that would be people fantastic. were killed during the <laughs> yeah. festival. How's the right. Magna Ride on those things? <laughs> yeah. No, no Magna Ride. No Magna Ride on those. But nice drive. But <laughs> yeah. a line lock. And a line lock. Yeah, okay. And launch control. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the launch control even spins the tires. That's the problem. Oh, what the hell kind of launch control is that if you're going to light up the tires? Know. I know you were telling me about that. Yeah, it's still, it spins. I, you can control the launch RPM. I brought it down as low as it can go, 1,000 RPM, <laughs> with a 305 tire in the back. I did it like nine times out in front of your studio here, and uh, spins the tires each time. That's got to be a second and a half off my time. I don't know why you would have launch control if it just lit up the rear tires. It seems to fly in the face of launch control. But uh, I'll talk to my mom about it next time I yeah. get some real I'm answers the and then report pressure. back to you guys. Oh, yeah. yeah drop it down. <laughs> yeah, drop it down, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So that's tomorrow. We'll be in Monterey. We're doing a live pod from the Nissan booth. That'll be at noon at the track. I'll be there. We'll have the Hino transport truck. That's the plan. God willing. <laughs> we'll be uh, sitting in a sea of uh, Nissans yeah. and some Datsuns, and you guys can come by. And We've seen the list of cars hi. they're curating, and it's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah we're going to do another dyno pull on Paul's GT1 championship car from 85 and try to get that thing mm-hmm. dialed in so we can race that car. 
And uh, you can uh, see me doing live podcasts, Pasadena, Seattle Moore Theater. God, that's great. Great theater with Adam Ray up there. Dr. Drew's in Pasadena, Phoenix, Anaheim. Just go to amcroll.com for all the info. And uh, we'll see you at the auctions. And go online. Go to uh, com and watch. We can watch it stream if we're yeah. not in yeah, town. It'll be, yeah, it'll be live on, on the website as well. It's fun to watch. Nice. I love it. And, boy, I don't care if you're a car guy or not. When that Ferrari or that Ford... Uh, GT40 or the Aston Martin hit the hit the stage. You better be watching. Uh, one last note in the vein of me being a horrible student. You were we were looking at that GT40 before yeah. the estimate came out. Matt yeah. said, "What do you think that thing's going to go for?" And I went, "It's tough because yeah, yeah. GT40s have they haven't traditionally yeah. fetched what they should fetch." And then Matt went and looked it up, and he said, "Well, oh, the highest one." At auction, it was like three point five million yeah, dollars like or something. Yeah, we, sold, yeah. we sold the Golf Mirage car for eleven a few years ago. That was in two thousand twelve. The Golf Mirage car brought eleven, mm, but that was one of the, the that was one of the Golf Mirage. Yeah, that was <laughs> very <laughs> hammer price. But but that's you know the Golf Mirage livery that he didn't you know, give me that cars. info. But either way, yeah. I was like, well, you eh. said the average for the GT four. Yeah, the average that we were in the box. It's too low. It's too low. It's too low. And I was like, oh, this thing Le Mans, iconic, and in the poster, and like, eh, but it came in third. It didn't win Le Mans. And then I went eleven million bucks. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> well done. Then uh, he said, "Let me get on. Let me text <laughs> Alexander." And then he said, uh, eh, "Between like nine and 12. Yeah. yeah. And I went, "I'm a fucking genius." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> could have said ten eight fifty. I should have said ten eight fifty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So go out there and say hi to us, or watch it online. Until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Alexander Weaver and uh, Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, saying, "Keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel." For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com.